new videos every day. So there's a whole lot of information out there all the time coming at us when we're in the grocery store or even watching TV. Um, constant where you are bombarded with new nutritional information and it can be really overwhelming. But let's pare it down to the most simple and most important thing you can know about health. That's the importance of eating whole foods, especially fruits and vegetables. Today we're going to talk about why whole foods are so good for our bodies and give you the 10 reasons why you should be eating more whole foods. Our bodies require several different substances in order to survive. These are called nutrients. Now we've all heard of proteins, carbohydrates, but there are a whole lot of other nutrients that are also vital for our health. Those include enzymes, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, fiber, etc. Whole foods contain a much broader spectrum of nutritional components than their partial or processed food counterparts. In fact, whole foods are jam-packed with nutritional components. Partial foods, on the other hand, tend to be refined. This means they've actually taken the whole food and stripped away some of the nutritional components so they can create a different food. A great example would be a kernel of corn. A kernel of corn contains starch, protein, some enzymes, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. But once you take away the fiber, take away the enzymes, take away the vitamins and minerals, or even take away the protein, you're left with high fructose corn syrup. So it's going to be far more beneficial for you to eat the whole kernels of corn and to be taking in all of those different nutritional components contained in the whole kernel of corn than it would be for you to have the processed counterpart, high fructose corn syrup. Another reason to incorporate more whole foods in your diet is that they contain enzymes. Enzymes are a vital part of every metabolic process that goes on in our body, which is to say they are necessary, or at least they significantly speed up, every chemical process that our body does. Enzymes can be found only in whole natural foods. Processed foods don't contain any enzymes at all. Enzymes are also very sensitive to cooking at high heat, and microwaving. So even if you have a really healthy food, if you're cooking it at a really high heat or putting it in the microwave, you're denaturing or killing a lot of those enzymes. This is another reason that we want to integrate more raw vegetables and raw salads into our diet and avoid cooking at high heats and microwaving. Another wonderful thing about whole foods is that they contain fiber. Fiber is a really important nutritional component that's vital for a lot of our different organ systems. One of the best things about fiber is that it adds bulk to foods and helps you feel more full faster so that you're not eating as much and so that you're not constantly walking around hungry. Another thing about fiber is that it aids in elimination means it's going to help keep your digestive tract clear and clean so that your body can absorb the things you need and get rid of the things you don't. Fiber also slows the absorption of sugar in your blood. So this is going to help you maintain your levels of blood sugar so that you have more consistent energy. This means that fiber is one of the best things that you can eat to curb your appetite and help you maintain your energy. It's worth noting that most processed foods contain little or no fiber, or may have some fiber added back in, but that whole foods, in fact, almost all of the whole foods, do contain fiber. And this is gonna be your best source of fiber in your diet. One of my favorite things about whole foods is that they're whole foods. What I mean by this is that the whole food naturally contains all of the different nutritional components, so fiber, vitamins, minerals, etc., that your body needs to break it down and use it. This means that when you eat an apple, the apple naturally contains all the different nutritional components that your body needs 
in order to break it down and get the most nutrition out of it. On the other hand, when you eat a processed or partial food, your body is not getting the nutritional components that it needs. And in order to break that food down and assimilate it or eliminate it, it's actually going to scour nutrients from other parts of the body. This is why, over time, a diet high in processed foods can actually lead to nutritional deficiencies. The next reason that we want to incorporate more whole foods into our diet is that they contain antioxidants. Now, there's a whole lot of buzz going around about antioxidants, but I want to try and give you a simple analogy to help you understand exactly why antioxidants are so vital for our health. Think of your body like a factory. The factory has all of its normal processes and functions, and over time there's a certain amount of waste left over. Now, even though that waste is a natural byproduct of the factory's or body's processes, that waste can be very detrimental to our cells. It can damage DNA and otherwise damage the cells and organ tissues. So antioxidants actually neutralize and help to get rid of that waste to protect our cells and organ tissues. Now, it actually is that toxic waste or buildup over time that partially contributes to the natural process of aging. There are a lot of different things in our lifestyles and diets that can contribute to our bodies containing more of that waste. Cigarette smoking is a big one. Other exposure to pollutants and things like that are also going to cause more of that toxic waste in the body. And this is why in somebody who's maybe a lifelong smoker, you can actually see that there is some accelerated aging that goes on. So whole foods contain a whole lot of antioxidants, but processed foods rarely contain any. We want to be eating whole foods and eating as many antioxidants as possible so that we won't have symptoms of accelerated aging and other degenerative diseases. Whole foods also give us more energy. Now I'm not only referring to the fact that we will actually feel more energized when we eat whole foods, but that our cells actually can get more energy from whole foods than from processed foods. Our bodies use glucose, a type of sugar, to create energy. So different foods contain different types of sugars and different amounts of sugars. So some foods are going to contain more glucose and some are going to contain less. Some foods will be easier for the body to break down and some foods will be more difficult. In general, whole foods contain more glucose that's easier for the body to get to in a more effective manner and processed or partial foods, which often are laden with a lot of chemicals as well, actually contain less glucose and are gonna be much more work for your body just to break them down and deal with them. So we wanna be eating more whole foods because they're actually going to give our cells more energy and in the process of making our organ systems more efficient, they'll actually give us energy and we too will feel more energized. The next thing I wanna tell you about whole foods is that they can be a very important part of maintaining healthy blood sugar. Now the topic of blood sugar has also been getting a lot of buzz lately because we've seen such a rise in diabetes. But the topic of blood sugar is pretty complex. But one of the most important things to understand about blood sugar is that you want to have slow gradual rises in blood sugar and slow gradual decreases in blood sugar. Whole foods are a really important part of that slow gradual process. But processed foods such as refined sugars and refined flours are going to spike blood sugar causing it to increase really quickly and to pretty high levels. 
when you're having a lot of intense spikes and drops in your blood sugar, that can lead to problems with insulin resistance or the production of insulin in the body. It also causes dips in energy and can cause really intense feelings of hunger that may even become painful. But if you're having slow rises and slow gradual falls in your blood sugar, you're not gonna suffer these energy lows. You're not going to have problems with your insulin. Your body's going to be able to use all of the sugar that you're feeding to it, so you have less sugar that's being turned into fat. And overall, you'll feel more healthy and have more consistent energy. Though it may seem odd to some, the next fabulous thing about Whole Foods that I want to mention is that they contain a lot of good fats. Now I really feel for fats. They've gotten a bad rap. But it's really important for you to understand that our bodies need fats and that a lot of fats are really healthful for our bodies. Fats that come from vegetable sources um, especially vegetable oils like coconut oil or olive oil, even flaxseed oil, contain a lot of really beneficial fats that are absolutely essential for our bodies. Even fats that come from nuts like almonds or walnuts and from avocados and other natural whole foods contain a lot of really beneficial fats that we need fats that are bad for us and that actually cause fat in the body usually come from processed foods. So these are saturated fats like margarine. These are fats that are found in many of the baked goods or bakery items that we find uh, wrapped up in plastic and packaged to us. Um, generally those contain partially hydrogenated oils or other processed oils that do not contain healthy fats. So once again, whole foods are gonna contain good healthy fats that our body needs, and partial or processed foods are usually gonna contain really unhealthy fats that are going to contribute to us actually becoming fat. So we're coming toward the end of my video, but there's just a couple more things that I really, really wanna mention. Another benefit of whole foods is that they have an alkalizing effect on the body. Research has shown that when the body's pH is more alkaline and less acidic, our cells actually function more optimally and our body is more healthy. Foods that are acid forming in the body include most meats, dairy, alcohol, sugar, tobacco, and most any processed food. So processed flours and refined sugars, all of these things are acid forming in the body. But not all acid forming foods are necessarily unhealthy. It's just important that we're eating more alkaline forming foods than acid forming foods. So the alkaline forming foods are most vegetables, with the exception of corn, which is actually acid forming. Especially the leafy green vegetables are highly alkalizing. Herbs and fruits are highly alkalizing. And lemon is one of the most alkalizing foods. So one of the best things that you could start doing today is adding more lemon to your tea or adding lemon to your water. And just in general, trying to incorporate more lemon and other alkaline forming foods into your diet. The last thing I wanna tell you about whole foods and the main reason that I feel that whole foods are really beneficial is that they don't contain anything artificial, synthetic, or toxic. Now, some people could argue that certain whole natural foods do have toxic properties in the body, but for the most part, there are no chemicals contained in a whole food. Now there's a whole lot of different food chemicals and food additives out there. Some of the ones that we know more commonly are high fructose corn syrup and MSG. 
And the research is just piling up, showing us all of the negative effects that these different chemicals have on our bodies. So for me personally, I like to err on the side of as few chemicals as possible. In general, we can know that food chemicals, food additives are not nutritive, meaning they don't have any nutritional components, and they may function as drugs in foods. So that's a food chemical that's affecting your brain in some way, telling your brain that you're eating a certain flavor or telling your brain that you're hungry or full, but it's not actually having any nutritive effect on the body at all, and in that way is acting as a drug. So it's kind of impossible to know what all of the different negative effects of different food chemicals are, but in general, you can understand that for the most part, they're either not nutritious or they're straight up toxic, and that whole foods are going to not contain any of these chemicals. Everything contained in a whole food is nutritive and is beneficial for the body. And that's why I prefer to eat whole foods primarily and try to limit the amount of processed or partial foods that I'm consuming. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope that this information was valuable to you and I hope that you'll leave me a comment letting me know if there's something you'd like to know more about or a topic that I haven't addressed that you'd like to know about. Also rate my video if this is something that's interesting to you and go ahead and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay tuned for all of our future videos where we'll look more into detail at the different topics I've discussed today and some other topics of health and nutrition. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.